The seven signs that he performed from chapter 1 to chapter 2, we see that the first miracle that Jesus performed was turning water into wine. Amen. And from there, we hear, we see Jesus healing the blind. And from there, we see Jesus walking on water. And we see Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. From the dead. And we see him performing these miracles. And he tell, he's telling them in the upper room. They are in the upper room. That's where he's telling, all, he's telling them all this. And he, he explains to them all this. And he's telling, speaking to us today. Now, number one, relation, relationship to God by being fruitful. The question we need to ask ourselves, what is fruit here? Mm. What is fruit? What is the fruit? Israel, God looks at them as a vine. In Osea, we, in Osea, Osea, we hear that he's telling them that you are my vine. You are my vine. He was telling the children of Israel. And now, what is a fruit? What is a fruit? And how do we produce fruit? And why produce fruit? Number one, what is fruit? A fruit in the book of Galatians, we are told. In the book of Galatians, it said the spirit, the, the gifts of the, the, the fruits of the spirit are gentleness. Let me go there, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter, Galatians chapter, chapter 5. five and verses 24. Yes, verses 20, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is joy. Mm. Is a love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So these are the fruits that we as believers have to produce as we live here on earth. And the, the, the other thing that I, 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 I forgot to mention is that the purpose of the book is in John chapter 20. Mm. John chapter 20, the 17. That's where, that's, we know, that, that's where the purpose of the book of John is. Chapter 20, verse 13. John chapter number 20 and uh, verse 13. John 20, verse 13, the Bible says, John chapter number 20 and verse 13, they asked a woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she mm -hmm. said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, 14 verse 81. 14 verse 81. Chapter number 14 and uh, verse 81. The Bible says, But the world must learn that I love the Father, and I do exactly what my Father has commanded me to do. Come now, let us live. Amen. So Amen. The, the purpose of the book is that that Jesus came to do the will of the Father. And the will of the Father is to do what? Is to come and save us. The will of the Father is He came to come and die on the cross so that we can have life and have life in abundance. That's the will, that's the purpose the why Jesus came, is to come and save us and to come and redeem us. And it's from this portion of scripture that's when he's saying, I am the vine, and I am, and you are the branches. Amen. So, the fruit, as we read in the book in Galatians, is that we need to bear fruit as Christian. Amen. We need to bear fruit as we go on in our Christian life. Now, there are levels of fruits. There are levels of fruits in, 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 in our lives. You see, some bears more, some bears few, some bears less. Mm. Now the question is, are we bearing fruit for the Lord? Mm. Are we bearing the fruit? Now, what does it mean to bear the fruit? Bearing the fruit. 
effort is leading someone to Christ. By doing that, you are bearing fruit. Not only leading someone to Christ, also is by living like Christ. Amen. When you live like Christ here on earth, you are bearing fruit. And not only that, by doing good deeds. Amen. Amen. So what are the good deeds? The good deeds are what the Bible tells us to do. Love one another. Love your neighbor as yourself. You give to the poor. You give to the poor. Those are the good deeds that we should do. Do. Amen. Amen. So going on, leading someone to Christ. Romans chapter 1, verse 13 is very clear. The Apostle Paul telling the Romans, he tells them in Romans chapter 1, verse 13. Romans chapter 1, verse 13. The Apostle Paul says that. Romans chapter 1 verse 18, the Apostle Paul telling the Romans to say, I do want to be, I do not want to be unaware, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, mm. that I planned many times to come to you, mm. but I have been prevented from doing so until now in order that I might have an harvest among you, Amen. just as I have done, just as I've had among other Gentiles. Amen. Amen. So the purpose here is to come and share the gospel so that we can save some for, to, 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 to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So that was the purpose. So I plan to come to you so that I may have a fruit among you, that I may share the gospel to you. And from there, that's when he says to say in verse 16, say, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power for the salvation to everyone who believes. Amen. So this is what it means. Bearing fruit. Hallelujah. This is what it means to bear fruit. Being like Christ. Mm. The fruit we as we produce the, the fruit produced as we as we are controlled by the Holy Spirit. The, the fruits are produced in us as we are controlled by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It is the Holy Spirit who comes upon us and He will teach us and He will show us and will give us these gifts and then we begin to grow in them. It's the Holy Spirit as we read in Galatians chapter 5. Amen. Those are the fruit of the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that comes. He told, he told them to say, I will leave and I will, I'm not going to leave you uh, uh, as often. As often. But the Holy Spirit will come and be with you. Now he's telling them to say, the Holy Spirit is to come, is coming to live in you. And when they leave, the Holy Spirit lives in us, then we bear fruit. We bear fruit. Now, doing good deeds, doing good works. Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. Pastor, if you are there, please. Colossians chapter one, 1 verse 10. Uh, verse 10. Colossians 1 verse 10. Verse 10. The Bible says, Colossians 1 verse, verse 10. 10. And we pray this mm -hmm. in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and that you may please Him in every way bearing fruit in every good work, growing up in the knowledge of God. Amen. 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 So, he, 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 he said, doing good works is this, is that, and we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord, mm. and you may please Him in every good work, growing in knowledge of God. Amen. Amen. Growing in knowledge. You may please him in every way, bearing the fruits in every good way. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we need to bear fruit as we are children of God. We are created for God for good deeds. We are created for good deeds to bear 
good fruit. Colossians, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse uh, 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians 2, 10. The Bible says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ to do good, good works. works. Amen. Amen. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. Amen. So there is a good work that God has prepared for each one of us to do in this life. So that is what it means of doing good works. It's Colossians chapter 1 verse 10 and Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. How do we produce the, the fruits then? How do we produce them? How do we produce these fruits? It's when the Holy Spirit comes. It's when God is in us. He says, by yourself you can do nothing. Hallelujah. By yourself you will do nothing. It's only when we abide in Him, when we live in Him. In John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, mm -hmm. and my father is the gardener. The, garden. the I am here is the same way that Moses, when he was saying by God to the children of Israel, and he says, what am I going to say? Who has sent me? God says, go and tell them to say, the I am has sent send me. me. You see, and on, in this portion of scripture, we will see a lot of the I am. He says, I am the way. Mm. I am the blade of life. Hallelujah. I am the good shepherd. Mm. I am the gate. You see, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And before Abraham, before Abraham was, I am. Mm. Amen. Amen. So God here, Jesus Christ, is telling his disciples to say, I am mm. is among you. Hallelujah. I am is with you. Mm. I am God. I am Jesus who is with you. I am the blood. You, I am the way. I am the gate. Hallelujah. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. Mm. You cannot see my father unless you see me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm. Amen. Amen. So realize to the true vine is to realize it's not talking about the salvation here. No, it's talking about us being fruitful. Mm. Jesus is telling them to be fruitful as he leaves the world. Hallelujah. He's going to leave them here on earth to continue with the ministry of Jesus Christ. And he's telling them to say, you have to know that I am with you. Hallelujah. And you have to know that I am is with you. Amen. Amen. And you have to know that I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. So he's talking about being fruitful. Being fruitful. He's talking about bearing more fruit. Amen. In verse 2, it says, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He cuts every branch in me that bears no fruit. We are in Christ. Hallelujah. We are in Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. He's not talking about salvation. He's talking about us bearing fruits. 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. Verse 13. And verse 13. The Bible says, for we are all baptized mm. by one spirit mm -hmm. into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, we are we were all given one spirit to drink. Amen. 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 So we we, 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 we cannot bear fruit in isolation. No, we have to abide in him. Mm. And it's by the Spirit of God that we all drink from. That's where we, we can flourish from. And that's where we can bear fruits from. Amen. Amen. So we are in Christ. The Holy Spirit is in us so that we can bear fruit. We are one body. We are one with Christ. 
We are one. We are one body, although many parts. We are Hallelujah. one in Christ. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says what? If anyone be in Christ, is what? Is a new creation. Amen. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. He's not talking about salvation. He's talking about us being in Him. Now, can a, can a branch bear fruit? Yes. Amen. Can a believer not bear fruit? Yes. Amen. Can a branch bear fruit? Yes. Mm. Can a believer not bear fruit? Yes. How? How can a believer not bear fruit? If when you detach yourself from fellowship, mm. when you begin to live as a lone ranger, when you begin to live by yourself, the Bible here says, without me, you can do nothing. So if you are a believer and then you think you can do without Christ, then you are not going to produce the fruit. Amen. Amen. So we can only produce the fruit when we are in Him. When He is in us and we are in Him. So can a branch, a, can a branch not bear fruit? Yes. Can a believer not bear fruit? Yes. How? It's when we are in isolation. We cannot bear fruit. Mm. In, in, in verse 2 it says, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bear, every branch that does not, that, that every, every, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes mm. so that it will be even more fruitful. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, the, 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 the portion of scripture here is in the present tense, it's not in the past tense, mm -hmm. it's in the present. So, as believers, we are called to bear fruit. Hallelujah. Now, today, we are called to bear fruit. Now, if we do not bear fruit, what does he do? He takes away. What, what it means here, it's not that he... It's not that sometimes, if you are a believer, and I've seen this, and you choose and you insist from following the Lord, and you find your own way, God may take you away. Mm, yeah. God may take you away mm. so that your spirit may, may be saved and your body perish. If you insist in doing what is not the will of God. But like if we continue here, we will hear that, that he cuts every branch that does not bear fruit. And what does he do? He gathered it and do what? Throw them fire. in the fire. You see? Now, here he's talking about us believers. Mm. That number one, it means he can lift you up. Mm. What it means here that he will lift you up is, for example, when you have you are planted tomatoes and you see that the branch is falling and it's going down the tree, what do you do? You lift it up oh. so that it can bear more fruits. Hallelujah. Amen. So you do not let it go and say, oh, it will touch the ground then from there. No, it will start rotting, but you lift it up and so that it can bear more fruits. What it means here is that it removes everything that does not bear fruits in us. Hallelujah. There are a lot of things in our lives that hinders us not to bear fruits. Hallelujah. A lot of things. Number one, if you stop fellowshipping with fellow believers, mm. you stop bearing fruit. You stop witnessing to others, you stop bearing fruit. You stop doing your good deeds, you stop bearing fruit. So what God will do here is that he will lift you up. He will lift you up. In the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, chapter 12, verse 6. My pastor, please. Hebrews 12, 6. Hebrews 12, verse 6. This is what the Bible says, what, what God does. If we do not bear fruit, if we choose not to abide in Him and live independently from God, this is what God will do. Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse 6. Hebrews 12, 6, the Bible says, Because the Lord disciplines those He loves. Amen. And He punishes everyone he accepts as a son. Amen. 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 You see, it's not, not every discipline is pleasant. 
mm. but it has a purpose. Hallelujah. Every discipline may, may look not to be pleasant. You may feel this is hard, I'm being done by here, but it's for our own good. Mm. It's for our own good. The Bible says here, it says, because the Lord disciplines those he loves. And he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. He, he will prune us. The, the punishment here is not to, to forsake us. No, it's to correct us. To say the way you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are living, this is going to lead into ruin. It, it, it happens even in life. For example, if you insist in doing things that are not of God, you find yourself that you are going to ruin your life and you're going to ruin your relationship and everything will go away. But the Bible here is telling us that he disciplines. Mm. The Lord disciplines those he loves. Hallelujah. And he punishes everyone he has accepted as a son. Mm. So in the mood, he's, he's, he's changing us, he's training us in a way we should go. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And in verse, the same chapter 2, verse 11, the Bible says, No discipline seems pleasant at, at, the, at, at the time, mm. but painfully. Later on, however, it produces, it produces what? Harvest. It produces a harvest of righteousness, righteousness. and peace, peace for those who are betrayed by it. Mm. Amen. Amen. So, when we are being pruned, it's not that we are being punished. When we are being pruned, it's that is so that we can bear more fruit, so that we can be strengthened, so that we can be disciplined by God. And how does pruning work? What does it mean to prune? To prune means to clean. It's cleansing. Amen. Prune means just to clean. The way we prune. Uh, the, the tomato or the, 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 the grapes or mm. any plants we prune, in the garden. We are, the plants we are pruning so that it looks clean, so that it produces more fruits. Why the pruning? So that we prune, we produce more, wow. more fruits. Amen. Mm. So that we can prune, produce more fruits. It says in, in, in John 15, verse, the, 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 verse 3. It says here, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let, let's verse 2, chapter 2, verse 2, verse 2 says, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Mm. While every branch that does bear fruit, it blooms. Hallelujah. So that it will be more, it will, it will be even more fruitful. Hallelujah. Amen. So when he's doing all this, the disciplining, the, the, the pruning, the removing, the lifting, so that we can be clean. Mm. So that we can produce more, 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 more fruits. Hallelujah. In verse 3 says, you are already clean because of the way I have spoken to you. Mm. Remain in me. Mm. The basis for, 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 for bearing fruit is to remain remain in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. It's to remain in Him. If we are to bear fruits, we should remain in Him. Mm. Why should we produce this? If we are to produce more fruit, we have to remain in Him. Mm. Abide in me. Hallelujah. Abide just means maintaining fellowship with Him. Maintain fellowship with him. Amen. I don't know about you. You will know in your Christian walk when you know that you are not having a fellowship with God. Mm. You know. Amen. Unless the Spirit of God is not upon you. Unless you are not sensitive to hear what the Spirit is saying. You will know Hallelujah. when your relationship with God is not right. You will know when you are not abiding in him. What happens if you are not abiding, abiding in Him? No fruit. Mm. There will be no fruit in your life. Why? You are, you are not having a fellowship with God. 
And how will God speak to you when you're not having a fellowship with Him? We, we, we need to be in, 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 in the abiding fellowship with Him. Hallelujah. Fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, fellowshipping with God at all time. No fruit, no lifting if we, if we do not maintain our fellowship with Him. Hallelujah. There will be no pruning. But if we abide in Him, there will be more fruit. Hallelujah. Abiding in Him, there must be much fruit. It says that remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Amen. Amen. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Mm. That's what Jesus is saying. Unless we continue with our relationship with him. Unless we continue following what is directing us. Unless we continue following him. We are not going to bear much fruit. If Hallelujah. This abide in him. Believers can produce this fruit. If only we remain in Him. If we want to see much fruit in our lives, we need to remain in Him. How does this all happen? Bearing more fruits is when we abide in Him. We need to abide in God. Hallelujah. When we abide in Him, we produce all kinds of of fruits because we are in him and we are not in ourselves. Hallelujah. Why should we produce why should we produce fruits? One negative thing is that if we do not produce the fruits, we will lose our rewards. Mm. It's not about the rewards. Mm. At Amen. the end of the day, when all is said and done, everyone will stand before the Lord mm. and every works will be Will be, will, be, will be tested mm. whether you learn the race in faith or whether you are learning your own race. Mm. One negative thing is that if we do not abide in Him, we will lose our rewards. Uh, and that means we are living by ourselves and not living in Him. Mm. Verse 6, it says, Verse 5, I am the true vine, you are the branches. branches. If you if, if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Do nothing. Without God, we will do nothing. Nothing. So if we produce these fruits, and the reason is that we need to remain in him so that he may lift us up, so that he may prune us, and the goal is that we may abide in Him. Mm. That is the whole purpose of this portion of Scripture. He's telling them to say, I am not going to be here anymore. You are going to remain in this world and you will be persecuted. But Lord, that I am with thee I'm with even you. to the end of the age. I, I am with divine. I am sending you into this world. Mm. The I am is with you. Mm. So He is with us. So if we are to reach out to this world, we need to love one another. If we are to reach out to live to this world, we need to live like Christ. If we are to reach out to this world, we need to produce the fruit in our lives. So that people will know you by the fruits, by your fruits. They will know you, they'll be attracted to you by the fruits that the Holy Spirit has put in your life. And they want to be with you because they will see gentleness, kindness, and love in your lives. Mm. So let us examine ourselves. Mm. Are we producing the fruits? Mm. Are we leading others to Christ? Are we reaching out to other people? Are we in fellowship with Him? If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish Hallelujah. and it shall be given. May we rise up and pray and ask the Lord to help us. Hallelujah. Our Father and our God. Oh, Jesus. Indeed, Lord, examine our hearts. Mm. You know our thoughts. You know our ways. You are aware and you are familiar with everything in our lives. Mm. And this way, as this way has come to us 
Father, we give you praise. Causing us to examine ourselves. We give you praise. Are we bearing the fruits? Mm. Are we leading others? Are we living Christ like? Are we in are we abiding? Father, we give Father you help us. Help us, Holy Spirit. Even we in this give you growth. busy world where we are caught up with learning from one place to another. Mm. God help us not to forget Mighty to abide in to remain in you so that you can be full, so that you can be so that you can be so that you can be Give you the glory, give you the honor. In Jesus' name.